Dr. Chen, recalculate the new thruster data and relay it to Blue Oyster called immediately in Stancia. Okay, roger that, doctor. Fuck! What's wrong? Seriously, you auto-updating now? General, I won't be able to calculate the right data for the satellite for 49 minutes. How long till impact? 11 minutes and 44 seconds. Fuck Microsoft! Okay. Fuck! A billion dollar rocket, decades of research, and it's about to get launch. And suddenly your system starts auto-updating itself. While this is hilarious in the Netflix show Space Force, but now the question pops up. Do space agencies like NASA actually use Microsoft Windows? If yes, how do they avoid these tech disasters? And what's powering systems aboard the International Space Station? Yes, but only in specific roles. NASA and ESA have used Microsoft Windows for administrative systems, and even on laptops aboard the International Space Station and astronauts used Windows XP. On the ISS until 2013, they played games, checked emails, and ran experiments, but XP wasn't the most secure. However, critical systems like rocket launches or spacecraft control don't use Windows. This is the first email sent from space in August 1991. Imagine a mission-critical system crashing with a blue screen of death. Or worse, a rogue auto-update. Space missions require stability, no room for bugs or crashes. Real-time operation. Systems must respond instantly. Customizability. They need software tailor-made for extreme conditions. The Curiosity rover on Mars runs on VxWorks, a real-time operating system because it can handle harsh conditions, like 125 degrees Celsius nights and Martian dust storms, without breaking a sweat. Critical systems are isolated from the internet, so no updates, viruses, or ransomware attacks can sneak in. Back up everything. Rockets and spacecraft have redundant systems. If one computer system fails, another takes over instantly. Testing on steroids, Software gets tested for years in simulators that mimic space conditions. During the Apollo 11 moon landing, the onboard computer crashed multiple times due to data overload. It rebooted itself in real time and saved the mission. Back in the day, the ISS ran on Windows XP but after years of crashes and security issues, NASA switched to Debian Linux in 2013. Why Linux? It's open source, highly reliable, and adaptable for space needs. Specialized software like NASA's operational software suite ensures astronauts can communicate, run experiments, and navigate emergencies. Did you know, NASA developed dexterous humanoid named as Robonaut to assist human in space exploration which also runs on Linux. In 1997, a software error caused NASA's Mars Pathfinder rover to reboot repeatedly, delaying its mission. In 2015, a Russian spacecraft spinning out of control was traced to a faulty firmware update. And yes, even the ISS has faced malware attacks, once, astronauts brought infected USB drives on board by accident. The Space Force episode might feel exaggerated, but it highlights the importance of robust, glitch-proof software. Microsoft actually collaborates with NASA, for instance, HoloLens, powered by Windows, helps astronauts practice repairs in augmented reality. But for mission-critical tasks, space agencies stick to tried and tested systems like Linux, Unix, or real-time OS. While we laugh at Space Force, it's a reminder that software plays a pivotal role in space exploration. From preventing mid-launch updates to surviving Martian dust storms, every line of code counts. So next time you see an astronaut, just remember, they might be coding in Linux. Do you know of any other funny or bizarre tech glitches in space? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe.